I would call it as an inflection point for the local uh, suppliers, okay, to up their ante, invest in technology, go into some advancement, okay. Builders like Mahindra, we are willing to uh, collaborate with them because now sustainability is all time peak. We know, okay, and and as a company, we are committed in reducing CO2 emissions. So we'll be more than happy to collaborate with the local. But end of the day, what it matters or boils down is the product quality. And if we are able to get a seamless supply chain, the product quality, we are up for it. So in the best interest of time, we can begin now. Uh, uh, so very happy to see the fraternity here and uh, thank you very much for taking the time out and joining in. Uh, welcome to the Blue Circle. Such a big privilege and a pleasure to reconnect with everyone, distinguished panelists who are handpicked because of the think input and the rich experience that they bring in. And thank you to our distinguished audience for joining us. We received close to 200 registrations, most of whom are CEOs, CXOs and senior leaders. Many of them are repeat visitors to our webinars and which is very encouraging and motivates us to provide even higher levels of dialogue to the online channels as well. For those of you who are new with us today, the Blue Circle is an exclusive community and ecosystem which is curated for leaders across six sectors, which are real estate, energy, e-mobility, logistics, healthcare, and aerospace and defense. For almost half a decade, we've been engaging leaders through our leadership conferences, webinars, and roundtables, and also our uh, a well-researched publication. We also present socioeconomic insights, which ultimately determine the evolving complexion of the market. And in response to the COVID challenge, and you'll be happy to know uh, that in, in addition to our web, uh, webinar series and our digital publication, we've recently launched the first version of the Blue Circle community app. It's somewhat like the sector-specific LinkedIn for senior leaders, a space to have meaningful conversations connect with like-minded people, house high quality curated content and provide access to business opportunities across our focus sectors. So those leaders among you who are interested, please do join us. I will also share the link to the app in the chat section and we'll soon be sending invitations to our guests post our webinar. We've also begun our selective outreach for memberships and I've close to thousands of members who've joined the app already. And today as part of our Make in India series, we're privileged to have big minds and leading thinkers of the industry joining for our real estate circles discussion. The topic is real estate supply chain. How can the dependency on imports reduce? And now in the best interest of time, I will just briefly mention the names and designations of our guests who've joined us. Uh, we have with us Mr. Debin Moza, Executive Director, Head of Project Management Services, Knight Frank India. Mr. Nimish Gupta, former MD, South Asia, RICS. Mr. Sebi Joseph, President, Otis India. Mr. Sudarshan KR, Chief Projects Officer, Mahindra Life Spaces Developers. And the chair and moderator for the session is Mr. G. Raghavan, founding partner, Next Practices Growth Partners, former CEO of Bharti Urban, NIIT, Ingram Micros, Carrier, Independent Director, Amrutanjan Healthcare, and also an esteemed director with the Blue Circle. I now request Mr. Raghavan to please chair and moderate the, uh, the session, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Siddharth. Thank you very much. And let me take this opportunity to welcome all the distinguished leaders who have joined us uh, from wherever they are to participate in the webinar. And I want to make a special mention of thanks to the distinguished panelists who have taken their time out on a busy working day and joined us to offer their insights and offer um, their perspectives and experiences with, on, the, on this platform. So welcome again and thank you for everyone who's put in the time to be part of this game. First came the geopolitical issues, then came the pandemic. Both of them have really threatened to realign the supply chain across multiple sectors across the globe. Equally parallelly developing are the sentiments about China, which many people have taken cognizance and are running programs called plus one strategy for supply chain. India has always been wanting to be up there in the, in the manufacturing side and be a leader. 
uh, with the starting of Make in India campaigns and the slogans, a lot of actions that did take place and followed by Atmanirbhar Bharat uh, initiative by the Honorable Prime Minister. And subsequently, more recently, the whole production linked incentive schemes. So there has always been a deliberate attempt to place tailwinds in, in our pursuit of becoming more, more self-reliant, uh, reducing import, such import materials, and so on and so forth. But today we have gathered to talk specifically about the implications of the supply chain uh, issues in the real estate sector. Now, and we are talking about a really humongous sector for the economy of the country. Over 10% of GDP, substantial imports. Maybe 10% is a kind of is the kind of numbers that is floating around in terms of how much of uh, the materials required in the construction and real estate industry is imported. More importantly, the sector is a very large employer. Therefore, you cannot take anything that impacts the industry any lightly. On the downside, the real estate industry is also the largest producer of greenhouse gases. And I'm told as much as 40% of the greenhouse gases are produced by the real estate industry in one way or the other. So we are talking about a very significant industry in, 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 when it comes to the Indian economy, particularly about the supply chain. Uh, substantial imports are taking place from uh, China and even materials that we would not guess that should be brought in from China are being imported from China. Let me just reel out the last large number of items that all of you may be familiar with. Iron and steel products, technical construction equipment, electronic equipment, plastic and fiber elements, solar panels, panels, uh, furniture and fit out goods, tiles, elevators, steel panels, electric switches, nails, plastic, steel pipes, aluminum windows, and there are many indirect materials that are also getting imported from China. Probably the word supply chain, the last word chain has been misinterpreted as China and therefore people are buying everything from China. Um, I know that the Real Estate Association Kredai actually appealed to 20,000 of its members recently to say, hey, please boycott goods from China. But we all know it is more easily said than done. And in fact, some of the uh, about 250 allied industries were requested, please step up and make available uh, products here so that people can actually reduce their imports. There are also rumors that Bureau of Indian Standards is considering tougher import restrictions for about 370 products. But the point is not all this. The point is, where are we in this whole game of supply chain for real estate? And what are the practical issues associated with becoming more self-reliant as far as this sector is concerned? It is like changing the tires of a car while it's running. Real estate sector is humongous. Every day things happen. Every day there's got to be a supply chain that is supporting this growth. So this is where things become very nuanced. And it is in this context that the experience insights of each one of you is going to come really, really very helpful. Once again, I thank the panelists for joining and without taking any more time, I would like to straight away jump into the conversation. First, I would like to invite Mr. Deben Moza. Like uh, Siddharth introduced, he's the executive director and head of project management services for Knight Frank. He comes up with a lot, large number of years of experience in the industry. And he's been a hands-on man, walking the, walking the sites, overseeing many things that has been happening. So here is a person for whom supply chain means a lot in the industry. And I would like to invite Deben to give your opening remarks. Uh, thank you, Raghavan. Thanks for uh, uh, a detailed introduction. Uh, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, and good afternoon, panelists. So, you know, I'll, I'll start... Uh, with uh, some research data, which I pulled out from, from Knight Frank Research, uh, that by 2040, uh, real estate market will grow to close to 9.3 billion US dollars from 1.7 billion US dollars in 2019. And real, est real estate sector in India is expected to reach a market size of 1 trillion by 2030 uh, from 120 billion in 2017 and contribute around 13% of the country's GDP by 2025. 
Uh, Indian real estate has witnessed high growth in recent times uh, with rise in demand for office as well as residential spaces. And Indian real estate attracts uh, US dollar 5 billion institutional investments in, nine, in 2020, equivalent to 93% of transactions recorded in the previous year. The investment from private equity players and VC funds reached US dollar 4.06 billion in 2020. The real estate segment attracts private equity investment worth 3,241 million across 19 deals in Q4 financial year 21. Investments in real estate sector grew 16 times compared to 199 million in Q4 of financial year 2020. In value terms, these investments were 80% of that in 2020 and 48% of 2019, according to the Knight Frank report. Now, engineering and construction companies are used to cyclical downturns, but the speed and strength with which COVID-19 has struck is unprecedented. Projects are being delayed or canceled. Supply chains are under threat. Employees and subcontractors' health is a, is a major concern. And there are practical challenges regarding social distancing on construction sites. So with these challenges, we're still surviving. And you know, for last one and a half years, we've seen on and off in terms of the lockdowns or a restriction. So these are challenging times in Indian real estate and industry. And this is a time where we need to focus on self-sustenance and creating a supply chain where the dependency on construction material on countries like China is, I won't say completely uh, you know, taken away, but over the years, India should become self-reliant and you know, take care of the growth which we are projecting by 2040. Thanks. Deben, that is a fantastic uh, setting of the significance of the industry. I really appreciate the data points. Your company has always been great in uh, doing a lot of good quality fundamental research. So thank you for setting the platform and unequivocally establishing how significant the industry is, which also means that the, 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 the elements of um, stakes are very, very high when it comes to this industry. And it's not just a question of somebody building something. It is so central to the economic development of the country, so central to millions of people being employed. So thank you for setting the stage for you know, bringing a higher level of relevance to everything that we're going to discuss in, this, in the next one hour or so. I want to move to Mr. Sudarshan Kaya. And Sudarshan has um, had many, many years of fantastic experience. He is currently the chief project officer in Mindra Life Space. His experience apart from India includes many other countries as well and many other regions of the, of the, of the, of the country as well. So I invite uh, Mr. Sudarshan to offer his uh, opening remarks, please. Thank you, Blue Circle. Thank you, Siddharth. Thank you, Raghavji, for this introduction and dear panelists and the viewers. Okay. I've been an operations guy throughout my life. So unlike any builder, even we are not insulated totally from not getting into imports. So right from the construction stage, from the structure to the finishes, there have been various interventions where we involve in importing things. China, of course, being the largest market. Okay, it starts with the aluminum palm work, direct produce auto racing, tiles, marble, laminate flooring, to CP sanitary, chemicals, to windows, to steel, lifts, performance glass. So, so there's been quite a lot of uh, right from the start of the project to the end of the project. And there's a, been a misconception saying that it is because of the cost or uh, cost, significant cost savings which we get from the import. But what I would like to say is being a responsible builder uh, we are responsible for the product, what we deliver to the customer. More than the cost component, it has something to do with the quality. And the quality here uh, means, it's a very holistic word. Quality is not the product quality alone. The sales service, 
okay it's a technology seamless supply okay turn around time so we see in all this advantages and throughout my career we have tried to embrace the local but then at some point of time there is a pushback so we rely upon and being in the sector we are able to make that differences so something which we have to work of course now because of the pandemic we have seen uh, this major disruption in industry and of course our real estate is the most affected and uh, this disruption has also created an opportunity and i would call it as an inflection point for the local uh, suppliers okay to up their ante invest in technology go into some advancement okay builders like mahindra we are willing to uh, collaborate with them because now sustainability is all time peak we know okay, and and as a company we are committed in reducing co2 emissions so we'll be more than happy to collaborate with the local but end of the day what it matters or boils down is the product quality and if we are able to get a seamless supply chain the product quality we are up for it that is what i have to say at this point of time so that's i think it's a very very interesting angle that you brought about the the most common alleged reason why people import from china is always considered to be cost now you brought up another angle which i think is real and very important is everything in addition to the price so i'm going to be circling back to you later on it will be very interesting to hear your specific views about some of the some of the components some of the products that are getting imported from china versus maybe italy versus what is available in india and i think there is a larger question about this here second is you also mentioned about how it is critical and central to the whole project management just not at the time of construction but subsequently as well so we would like to hear your views a little bit more in depth but i'll be circling back to you uh, with for those views thank you for your opening remarks anyway thank you now i would like to move to uh, sebi joseph mr sebi sebi joseph is the president of otis india and he has been the president of otis india apart from having actually run many other countries uh, operations for what is around the globe he is a long time what is uh, leader and we are very very fortunate to have him in fact he had a conflict of schedule today but once he heard about the opportunity to provide his insights he um, rearranged that uh, conflict and came here sebi thank you so much we would like to open the floor for your opening remarks thank you thank you siddharth and uh, raghavan for organizing this session and thank you for the nice intro it's a pleasure to have a conversation with uh, my co-panelists today considering the backdrop of geopolitical situation and pandemic the topic is very relevant and contemporary i would say as everybody was mentioning real estate is an important constituent of economy second largest provider of employer supply chain in real estate is complex and highly disorganized we were talking about china again and again and the raghavan was saying uh, what do you call converting chain into china <laughs> but uh, yes china is world's factory 28% of manufacturing is from china is more than what us and germany makes you know put together china makes from footwear to biotech low end to high end and if you look at the india versus china 11.8% of import is from china against 3% export to china so in my opinion we need to have a very balanced view very unemotional view and we should have a gradual shift between banning china or putting an abrupt stop to chinese products to make in india which is the right approach and glad that government is doing through almanirbhar bharat and introduction of pli schemes i think we have it's all linked 
with uh, supply chain, we have an opportunity to grow in manufacturing too. We talked about China as the world's factory, but India has an opportunity to be become a manufacturing powerhouse. As of uh, 2020, 17% of our economy, 174 to be exact, is from manufacturing. 2000, it was 15.3. It has grown, but not much. If you compare a country like in, uh, Vietnam, it has grown twofold. So we have an opportunity. How should we grow other some industrial reforms along with complementary actions from the industry? Maybe more know-how, technology transfer, access to capital, lifting of productivity. India has got a low labor and capital uh, productivity, lower import cost, etc. Switching over to our industry, my industry, elevator industry, India is the second largest elevator market in the world after China. And the industry is expected to grow 4 to 8% in the next four years. Pre-COVID, it had grown 3 to 5%. Last year was degrowth. Otis has been in India for 129 years. And we have a strong confidence and belief in India. And we have a state of art facility in Bangalore. And we have two lead development centers in India, one in Bangalore and another in Hyderabad. And over the years, we have been churning out products mainly through reverse innovation and cater to Indian consumers. As of now, we are covering about 90% uh, of our requirements from Indian factory, Bangalore. And we have localized about 65 to 70% of the components. So this is, this is fantastic uh, setting um, from the perspective of one of the largest components of the real estate industry. Uh, thank you, Sedi, for setting that up. I know that your company is a very systematic uh, planner and worker in this area. I'm sure that you made progress over the years and not necessarily through any knee-jerk reaction as a result of the recent developments. But still, it will be wonderful to get to know from you what your plans are, what are the drivers that you're using to, to make this um, even reduction, further reduction of dependency on imports. So we'll circle back to you and we'll be, you know, coming back to you with some questions. I think the audience will be very interested to hear those answers. So for the opening comments, I would like to move to Mr. Nimish Gupta. Uh, Mr. Nimish Gupta is a founder and CEO for Jan Leap. He's been a serial entrepreneur and he was also the former managing director for South Asia for RICS. So may I invite Nimish to give his opening remarks, please. Thanks a lot, Ragman, and thanks a lot, everyone uh, on the panel, uh, to try and basically uh, bring some sanity to this industry and to what we believe uh, uh, the Make in India should do for the reality sector. So I'm going to ignite sir, some fire over here, uh, and uh, I'll be unapologetic about it because if we have to grow, we will have to basically take certain bitter pills. So um, as possibly I had mentioned that I'm going to talk about five aims, which will make sure that the Make in India uh, works very well for reality. So Make in India becomes reality for reality sector. So that's that's something which we need to understand. So the first M I do want to talk about is mindset. And uh, while I did hear from Sudarshan when he talked about uh, quality being an important factor over here, um, worldwide, there is a term known as LCC. And we all know that LCC stands for life cycle costing. So people, when they want to basically uh, choose a particular equipment or do certain level of procurement, uh, the value engineering and life cycle costing goes hand in hand. In India, that LCC is known as lowest capital cost, especially in the real estate sector. We do want to make sure that anything which is being bought in the real estate sector, and I can't blame the real estate industry for what is happening uh, for the last two years because of the pandemic and other issues. 
and at the same time some of it's uh, some of it is uh, their own making um, as i said that the that the greed of some of the developers who had basically uh, brought an ill repute to the real estate industry has actually created a a, a, a chasm for a, a, a huge chasm for the credibility of the real estate industry the second one which is on the mindset is research and innovation we are yet to see that investment from the real estate industry and from generally the industry which is trying to work as a supply chain to this industry to try and put in more uh, effort in research and innovation so if sudarshan says that i am not looking at only china i am trying to buy things from outside um, other countries which are actually well advanced why do i have to look at germany for precision tools so why can't actually that be done over here when the manufacturing of some of these cars german cars is happening here why can't that be done over here but then the fact remains that the mindset around research and innovation within the real estate industry which is the actual consumer of this uh, technology and the supply chain who believes in actually surviving through the situation or possibly trying to make quick opportunistic bucks out of whatever product they can sell and not having a long term view is something which is actually a bigger killer the third one which is related to this in mindset is uh, respecting intellectual property we saw a huge pandemonium in this pandemic around vaccine uh, i mean you saw that india uh, some of these vaccine manufacturers were reluctant to basically pass on the technology to india because they felt that india does not respect uh, intellectual property that much and that possibly is one of the reasons we don't see some good manufacturing entities coming or possibly trying to do a tech transfer to indian or maybe try and do a tech partnership with the indian manufacturing entities which can help actually improve uh, the situation over here with respect to uh, getting quality product the second m is money obviously uh, which is basically uh, the amount of money uh, which should go into investment in manufacturing investment in research and innovation uh, the sources of it how do you make sure that you make those sources available for that investment is something which is absolutely uh, critical for this the third one the third end which i'm going to talk about is uh, again one more critical one is manufacturing infrastructure whether it is about policy clearance whether it is about red tapeism whether it is about logistical infra i mean you look at any of those cities any of those urban centers which houses are industrial belts you will see that the internal roads of those industrial belts is completely uh, appalling i mean you can't drive your two wheelers or four wheelers or even the trucks who basically move out from those place are actually trucks who are basically scaring everyone on the road because who knows one of them will tipple down the fourth m is around mechanization technology and innovation uh, while we do have uh, and uh, i hate to say this and i hate to acknowledge this when india is known to be a labor intensive country let me tell you guys uh, there is a bigger problem there uh, the challenge which we have not taken up on ourselves and that is something which uh, uh, which i always uh, love to bring up and i think this was briefly touched by cb as well india as a country moved from primary uh, economy in straight away into tertiary economy into the service economy without looking at the growth in the secondary economy which is where mechanization technology innovation uh, in the industry uh, uh, generally failed but at the same time within the industry also uh, construction industry ragwan has been a laggard in adopting anything if you look at some of those things which are happening elsewhere in the world uh, we are possibly 5 to 7 years behind them whether it is bim even though we do talk about them but then let me tell you that this is more of a lip service at most of the ends we have we are yet to see a completely uh, ipd project in real estate industry which has seen an end to end implementation of technology the last m is about manpower shortage uh, we do talk about dividend uh, demographic dividend uh, ragwan i would like to bring up on skill dividend over here 70% of our demographic dividend is actually an underprivileged one they don't have access to resources they don't have access to opportunities which is where the challenges are which is what we see as shortages in skills not just in the research and innovation piece but in the manufacturing entity also and for that matter even in the usage pattern of how we see i i can give you multiple examples later on when we when we try and basically elaborate on some of these points
but I would love to talk about one or two case studies in this case whenever we have an opportunity. Thanks, Ravan. Thank, I thank hope that ignites that a was, fire. That was a very very comprehensive state setting, but I need to I need to take a minute and then uh, kind of respond to a couple of points which you mentioned. Uh, one is maybe in the five M's you may want to add a sixth M called Make in India. Okay. Now, but on a, on a serious note though. Um, I haven't heard technology transfer to Indian manufacturers to be an issue. I know of many other countries, I don't want to specifically name them. I know of many other countries where if you went and gave a technology transfer to that country, you can kiss goodbye to your IP. But I think India is definitely not in the basket of countries where uh, IP is uh, at risk or anything like that. But then this is a topic for us to chat another time. But they, I just wanted to express my opinion on it. On the demographic, David, and I think you raised a very, very important point, particularly relevant in the real estate sector where maximum number of, I mean, it provides a large employment. But the context of demographic dividend, whenever it was being talked about and um, articulated, was based on working age population. Working age population of India as a country is going to be much larger than the working age population of many other countries by 2050, I think. By 2050, the number of people in excess in India was going to be in the region of nearly 50 million people, whereas the rest of the countries will be having shortage of this equivalent number, cumulatively speaking. Uh, there, of course, like everything else, a dividend doesn't come unless you invest. So here, the real investment that was required was to really do a massive skilling. The whole National Skill Development uh, Corporation and the whole skill agenda was born around the time. But with many other initiatives that we have had in the country <clears throat> that is yet to take full-fledged uh, trajectory in order to really meet what will really be a demographic dividend, but dividend cannot come without investing. That's sort of, I just wanted to add to your fantastic uh, setting of the uh, platform for this conversation. I really thank you very much for it. Now, I want to move to Deben. We are for people who have been listening to the conversation so far it is likely that they carry an impression that all of us are collectively saying we have no choice but to import. Here is a bunch of reasons why we're importing. Ladies and gentlemen and members of this uh, participation today, let me make it clear. Every one of the leaders who's assembled here is very conscious of the inevitability as of now, but they're equally conscious about wanting to make a difference. And each one of them has got ideas and thoughts and work is going on to see how that can be how that can be changed. It is the enormity of the current situation and the significant movement that we need to have towards having a, a greater self-reliance is echoing in the kind of views that, uh, that you are hearing. Certainly, everybody around the table is committed to the possibility of improving our self-reliance, particularly for this industry, because nobody is happy to necessarily import stuff. Now, when we talk about that, uh, I think nobody better than Devin Moza and subsequently Sudarshan, who can talk about what is the importance of supply chain when you're actually executing the projects. I want to move to Devin. Maybe you want to talk about the importance of supply chain in, in the way that projects need to be managed. And you could also share your quick views on, in your opinion, what are the, what are the routes to self-reliance, at least greater self-reliance? Over to you, Devin. <clears throat> Thanks. Uh, very interesting question. And, uh, you know, uh, what has happened in last one and a half years is uh, sort of an eye-opener for us in terms of how dependent we were uh, on the important imports of uh, constru construction material. And I don't, you know, while I partly agree with Nimish and Sudarshan that, you know, most of it was cost-driven. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, India in the last three decades has focused more on service industry than on, on manufacturing. And, you know, like China, which became the, you know, um, uh, manufacturing hub of the world, we, we focus more on, more on, you know, software and back office operations. Uh, I think what... Uh, pandemic has done is uh, has given us that re realization that apart from IT there, there are other sectors which where we need to focus and uh, when the first lockdown happened 
we we face the acute shortage of material because most of it was imported. Uh, but India comes with multiple challenges, and uh, Namish and Sebi touched upon it as in terms of you know real estate is a very labor intensive uh, field where there's a reliance on you know resourcing human resource. And in India, unfortunately, we have dearth of skilled labor. Uh, we have dearth of technology usage in construction. So we're still practicing the, uh, you know, I can say uh, old techniques or, you know, uh, in, in construction work. But what I feel is because of the pandemic, uh, we, we are looking at acceleration of uh, technology uh, and usage of technology and uh, I don't foresee that happening you know in a couple of months it's going to take time and when it comes to say, being self-reliant it it is work in progress government is promoting uh, Atmanirbhar schemes like Atmanirbhar Bharat or Make in India uh, but we cannot uh, do it overnight so it is going to take time so again you know there are large corporates and a lot of companies who have committed to you know zero carbon footprint it's again uh, uh, you know leading to the direction where you know you need to procure material uh, without wasting too much of fossil fuel so collectively i think we are moving towards a direction where we we have we can create that supply and demand within within this country uh, and but we cannot be 100 percent self-reliant in next you know four to five years it, it will take time and, and it's work in progress uh, but i think the kind of demand we have in terms of how real estate will grow in india this is something where the focus would be and in in the projects uh, i think now with you know, uh, with industrial corridors developing, I think India has, has uh, come up with five industrial corridors. We have now warehousing uh, uh, sector and logistics sectors expanding. We have, uh, you know, data centers coming up. So this is very exciting time where, you know, the kind of demand we're generating within the country, uh, the, the self-reliance becomes uh, mandatory. It's not an option uh, in long term. So in other words, what you're saying is there are actions going on, but you've got to be patient. It's not an overnight uh, result that we can get, but it will take its time. And there are certain areas where we could possibly get results quicker, and there are certain areas which will take a long time. So I think that's a fairly balanced view of what we can expect. But let me go to uh, Sudarshan. Thank you, Deban. Let me move to Sudarshan. Sudarshan, <clears throat> there are two points in which you had, uh, you know, briefly touched upon. One is you were kind of explaining how supply chain is just not a buy, fit, and use, and get out kind of an issue. It's large, la much lot larger, and the implications are much wider. So we, can you just articulate a, a, on that point? And along with that, you mentioned that, listen, cost is not the only reason why people are going to other countries to buy. So can you kind of give some examples uh, about uh, how these criteria are in parallel to the cost criteria for imports. So how it impacts the supply chain, how supply chain impacts the actual project management and why cost is not the only reason. Over to you, Sudarsh. Okay. Agarji? Yeah. So let me be very candid and upfront. Okay. The engineering adoption somewhere in our industry, like many of us, the analyst also mentioned, has been probably inadequate or poor or, or it's uh, time consuming. Okay. Uh, if I have to say, you know, uh, let me go into specifics. Okay. Uh, we're talking about something called an aluminum form book. Probably it is not an end user's perspective. Okay. See, he's not bothered if you water the metal which, through which you have done your shutter or how is your concrete resulting from that. Okay, so it, it is something which is, which is again, technology to construction. Okay, we've been seeing, okay, we've been importing 
we've been talking about this aluminum form work some 10 15 years close to two decades back we had initially malaysian products now i think koreans have really outclassed us there's been so much of imports happening from korean industries okay and we have been to these areas we see drastically how technologies have to move in okay see the kind of uh, technology in terms of uh, welding okay the fusion welding they adopt or the robotics what they have or the precision building what they have somewhere down the line you know, when it comes to our indian counterparts you know, there has been slight dilution and that results in the number of repetitions being an operations guy you would always invest on something it's it's a capex for me okay we bound to have some 100 plus repetitions eventually because of the stitch building it's not going beyond 40 repetitions that is one example which i told same goes in terms of tile okay so tile is one 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 aspect okay we have seen ki we are talking as a as a builder or as an construction engineer or something we are supposed to hold on to the attic stock so every time a batch is been produced okay there is a shade we are forced to keep some reserve as an attic stock for a post repair or some wear and tear or replacement okay and and you just imagine from a construction point of view when you have a huge development okay and where in your inventory runs into lakhs of tiles so different batches different shades so it's it's impossible to create a warehouse kind of thing okay these are some areas of quality which i'm telling quality parameters which i want to touch upon so it, that is where we are the challenge has been then then eventually there is a pushback we end up buying materials from there from outside and we have seen reasonable success okay been importing tiles from china the last 4 to 5 years okay it's one single shade one single stock in the warehouse and we have not had any issues okay so something to do with the tolerance something to do with the raw material it's their domain knowledge something to do with the equipment research lab and it happens but it happens at a very slow pace now i have come across some aluminum form of vendors who have used fusion uh, technology for welding or uh, they've been using robotics or they've been using precision welding but then the turnaround time before they adopt the technology we lost close to a decade or more okay and uh, when we talked about implementing that in our indian scenario they have gone one step ahead so this gap has always been there as i told you a builder is responsible for the product what is being to his customer so we we are very about all this product we have to have a quality product given to the customer because we are end of the day we are responsible for this some areas what i said key where people and a supply chain is you know a construction project life cycle of a construction project is a long gestation one it takes 3 to 4 years so you can't expect a stock to be placed okay in the beginning of the project and hold on till till the end might be 3 to 4 years we might have to schedule our dispatches programming in 3 or 4 installation so supply chain is very essential so that you no know, there is a seamless and consistent quality being delivered throughout the uh, duration of the project so, so, so that's some basically things. basically given a choice you would like to buy from next door given all things being uh, equal you would like to buy from next door you have no inbuilt incentive to import and use if anything there are enough disincentives to have to import you're importing because you're being forced to but let me ask you one simple question are you an optimist that there will be movement positive in this direction very very optimistic okay. because I'm i have seen to... current pandemic and disruption what is happening definitely we are going uh, precast can be one thing if i have to touch about no no i'm going to come back to you i'm going to come back to you sudarshan i think i like that optimism therefore i'm going to come back to you and ask you look if you were to run a program for the country to increase the localization what are the responsibilities that the developers need to take on and what are the responsibilities some of the key vendors need to take on i would like to really hear your views because you have really worked across and um, you are a hands on uh, person who run projects and you continuing to be running a major number of projects throughout the country i would like to hear your views on this when we circle back and come to you but for right now i'm going to move to sebi um sebi you made an interesting uh, point you said that you know it is not enough to have a program like atmanirbhar alone there are more components of this um, 
encouraging uh, atmosphere that is required. So can you just articulate a little bit more about this? Thanks, Raghav. Good question. Yeah, I think uh, Almandir Bhar is the right program. We are in the right direction. TLI schemes, everything is in the right direction. Execution is the key. While government executes, the sector has to support it through complementary action. For me, I think the most important thing, as Nimish was mentioning, the mindset. A mindset of innovation has to be there. I think that's the key ingredient for faster indigenization, I believe. So it's one of one is mindset, a, a commitment to embrace quality. Then integration maybe of automation and digitalization as factories are concerned. And Nimesh was going on speaking about skill dividend, which is very important, I believe. Because reskilling, upskilling, all these things are important. Perhaps we will get support through labor court, but the industry need to come forward and to make revolutionary change. First, we need to have introspection and we need to make some changes there. So it's a combination of all these things, uh, I think, which should help. But the main thing is a mindset of innovation. We, are, uh, we, we need to look you know, outside the box. Really, it's not a cliche. We look inside and look outside the box, you know, and make uh, reinvent ourselves, which is very important. There are opportunities, but we need to have that mindset and the courage and uh, have complementary actions with government and move away the impediments. It may sound which uh, impractical, but I think we can make steps. In our own case, we had challenges. We went, came through, we have, uh, Release two products every year, past six, seven years, to cater to growing residential segment in the elevator uh, market. 80% of elevator market is residential. And this pandemic, we had a plan already. We advanced the localization program. I happen to invite you to one small uh, question about this. When you you are a heavily engineering machinery based uh, manufacturing company, and you produce a product which is also so complicated for a common man. Now tell me, when people are importing technical construction machinery from abroad, do you think they will get the same amount of productivity for that machine in this country as the machine is producing in other countries? And if not, what are the other associated works that people have to do when they're importing a machinery here in order to get the design output in terms of quantity and quality for that machine? I'm sure that you must be using quite a bit of machinery, which is probably not made in India in order to deliver a quality product. Would you be able to comment on it? Yeah, good question again. That's where I reverse in the, uh, innovation comes. You know, tweaking to Indian situation. Tweaking means it's not just improvising a bit. Maybe going to the extent of one is system optimization, from system optimization moving to system development, and even sort of redesigning. And we have got high caliber Indian engineers available in the country. There is no dearth about it. So I think we need to encourage them. And they have a very searching minds to allow their potential, use their potential to come out with innovative solution. That's what we did. Uh, for example, we have sold, we, we have a product called Generation 2, which has sold the 1 million across the globe. It revolutionized, it's a, instead of a rope, it runs with flat belt. Elevator is lifted through flat belt. We brought this product to India in uh, 2010. Uh, 2010, then we worked on it to suit the Indian conditions. No, Sidi, I'm personally, personally aware that I'm going to be circling back and coming back to you for one question, which is something you guys have been doing really well. Namely, you've been investing in 
uh, research and development in India, uh, product engineering in India, with a couple of centers in the country. So I'm going to be coming back to you because that looks like one of the important elements uh, required in order to increase the localization content, localized content for the real estate industry, and particularly uh, those components which are heavily engineering oriented. I'm going to come back to you about this. I'm sure that Sudarshan in his points, he's going to say about the need for um, you know, uh, engineering and research and innovation, but I'm going to come back to that point in a little bit. Just hold your thought on it. Thank you. Thank you for these comments that you gave. I want to move to Nimish. Nimish, I have a, I have a rather uh, provocative question for you. I would love that. I know. That's why I'm choosing you for that question. If you were the god of supply chain for real estate India, real estate in India, what can you possibly do to alter the mindset? Mindset is mindset is mindset. That is what is so. So what, are, what can you do to make the mindset move towards a direction which is supporting uh, localization? For example, what will you do to make the world at large understand life cycle cost versus lowest calorie cost or any other mindset? Can you just talk about this? So if I was God, first of all, bringing a little bit of humor into this Raghavan, I'll create a spark in my team to make sure that the person who has been filtered into the real estate industry go through a brain uh, mapping mechanism, which first of all, take greed out of the system. So the, the greed has to be driven out. And <laughs> if that greed has uh, taken out, I'm sure a lot of things will fall into place. So the problem is we don't... But on, a serious, on a serious note, see, sometimes, sometimes... We have to work around what is so, yeah. what the realities are. Yeah. The realities are whatever you have described. It's 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 so it's debatable. That's I'll, okay. I'll, that is what is so. Yeah. I will answer that right one. See yeah. what has happened. If you look at the commercial real estate, commercial real estate because now developers have understood the value of uh, uh, using annuity income into it. They have now gone into a system wherein they don't try and sell the commercial real estate directly, but then then try and rent it. And in that process, they know that they will have to manage the facility. And if they have to manage the facility, they'll have to look at life cycle costing. If they have to look at life cycle costing, they'll have to look at something which basically gives them longer life, lesser operation, or lesser operative cost, lesser maintenance, and possibly more warranties. And that's where commercial real estate seems to be thriving on that. Uh, secondly, I mean, now you take it to the residential market, wherein you now know that uh, uh, your Model Tenancy Act is coming which is paving way for rental REITs as well in residential uh, real estate, which is where I think the mindset of being uh, being providing the cheapest quality material. So, so Darshan did talk about the quality challenges which we have, but if I try and keep that aside for a moment, I'm hoping that in that mindset of the supply chain, they're able to bring in certain level of consistency in the product which they do. I'm sure uh, there will be a, a, a complete mindset change within the real estate developers also to bring on board a lot of local supply chain over here. So I, I think the simple answer is trying to make sure that some of these things which are in control of real estate developers, they start altering their mind towards life cycle costing, making sure that they're responsible. I did see a question which was raised in the Q&A session also, which is talking about green buildings. Now, green buildings is an element of sustainability we are trying to bring in over here. If we try, try and bring that thought process into it, life cycle costing is talking about making sure that you're getting the best buck out of it, making sure that you're sustainable, making sure that you're green, make, making sure that you, you are a responsible citizen, you are a responsible developer, and then you are a responsible country. So Raghavan, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a big ask. It's a big ask, but the first thing will be from changing the mindset from greed to need of the hour for the country. All right. Okay. That is certainly, certainly a very um, interesting viewpoint. And uh, obviously a topic like this uh, requires several blue circle webinars before we can actually completely cover it. But I really appreciate you, you know, throwing out, uh, coming out with those views and, um, you know, expressing yourself uh, fully and um, completely. Thank you so much, uh, Nimesh. Really appreciate it. I want to go back to, uh, you know, Sudarshan. So, you were mentioning about um, things that need to get done in the country by the local manufacturers and maybe the real estate uh, players as well. 
in order to improve the localization component of uh, the supply chain. So would you like to talk about it a little bit? In other words, responsibilities of- Raghun, Raghun uh, looks like we have, uh, we have lost Sudarshan. <laughs> we lost Sudarshan? Yeah, yeah, as soon as okay, the I'm sure, God I'm sure came it... in with a hello behind, you can see a hello behind. <laughs> I see, I see. The Indian moment, the moment we talked about God, I think that happened. Yeah, yeah, so let, me, uh, let, me, let me use this, I mean, go back to uh, Sebi. Yeah. Sebi, basically, I'm aware that <clears throat> you have some of the top-notch engineering centers. You and companies like GE have invested heavily in the engineering talent of this country to really produce uh, products for the world. And I'm sure that a lot of your engineering talent is aimed at ensuring that you produce products appropriate for the country with materials that are available in the country. So would you like to talk about it? When did the investment start? What kind of work you are doing? What can be, uh, what can be repeatable uh, points about this for other players in the industry? I think I already mentioned it. Over the years, I would say past decade, we invested, we built a center in Bangalore and Hyderabad. And uh, Bangalore caters for, uh, you know, we did tech transfer, then system optimization, development and design part of it. Now we are, we are into design mode. It took, it took a while. It took uh, five to six years. First we increased the resources. Obviously they, we have to bring uh, the enhance the competency. And now we are into design. In fact, we are designing global platforms. We are proud to design global platforms and we are on the verge of exporting to other countries, South Asian, uh, Southeast Asian countries to start with. So we made a progress on this, but it, it, it did it over a period of time. Very focused approach very planned approach. And in the process, we could uh, cater to 90% of requirement for Indian market. Earlier, it was- you said this uh, question, Sebi, sorry to interrupt. Uh, you have a lot of uh, vendors who are supplying components to your fa factories, right? right so right. does your engineering uh, group work with those vendors as well to improve their processes, improve their quality, improve their cost as an extension uh, of your work? Uh, absolutely, we did that. In fact, we developed vendors in India when we were just uh, brought in uh, tech transfer. Our uh, components, especially one product on Gen2, it was only 25 to 30 percent indigenous component. It's all from Europe. But then over a period, we have brought down to 70 percent. And we're still making progress. And we are developing vendors in the country. Creating a supply chain ecosystem in the country that only will sustain for a long time. You know, so so we have a clear program and roadmap, not only on the product development, but as part of product development on building the supply chain. So it's a very conscious effort, which is uh, paying us dividends. So I think like uh, it all starts with mindset as Nimesh was. Uh, saying earlier, because I'm repeatedly quoting him because mindset is a key thing, or you can say company attitude. It can be global, yes, but it's local also. And embrace innovation, build a team. You know, that, that's the only way to go about. So, Almundarbar will support it. In fact, uh, I have a point saying, saying some of the actions we can augment this. Which I will leave it to you if you, you may have questions later. Like in every No, no, but why don't, why don't you go ahead? Why don't you just run along yeah, with it and complete it? Yeah. I, I, I think we can do much in the area of electronics. Okay, it's under PLI scheme, but we can do much. Uh, we can get electronics components, PCBs at lower cost. So the execution of PLI schemes should help. We have a great opportunity in IoT and digital solution providing equipments. The country has got 500,000 elevators installed across. And if we can provide cheaper IoT solution, 
I won't say cheaper. I won't use the word cheaper. It's sorry, affordable IoT solutions, which will be very good for end user, not only on quality angle, but also from the safety angle. There are many incidents, accidents happening. So this could be avoided. So this is an area where uh, what do you call, we could get support from government, you know, in, in terms of incentives, tax, holiday, etc. So and in other words, what you're saying is, uh, while we talk about this whole supply chain, how we can become um, more reliant on India-based suppliers, what you're saying is, it's just not enough to talk about it. Um, the, the customer or the end customer, in this case, the real estate developers, or uh, manufacturers of important uh, ingredients, uh, important components of the real estate industry like yours, need to invest in engineering and work. And that work has to extend beyond selfishly within their factory portals to outside, work with the vendors, develop them more for starting with the design, cost, quality, and overall systems associated with it. It's a whole system because Absolutely. if they have a fantastic product and can't reach to you on time, or they expect you to have zillions of inventory, then that doesn't make sense. So it's a systemic approach. You are saying that there's a responsibility that you need to take in order to develop that supply chain ecosystem. So it is not an automatic thing. In countries where they are very self-reliant, they have done a phenomenal amount of investment. Even in large Japanese manufacturing companies in the country. They have invested a lot of time and effort and pure blood engineering talent in order to develop their supply chain ecosystem. So I think that's a very important point. I think there's a lot of transferability of this important point on the real estate sector. If the real estate sector can actually dig deeper and look at what are the areas in which they can actually adopt something like this, it'll be really very valuable. But that let me move on that uh, you know, point to Sudarshan. So what we were talking about, Sudarshan, is that you do believe that there is a serious responsibility on the part of the real estate players, as well as the vendors to the real estate sector. Vendors cannot just sit on their laurels and expect that, please stop imports, buy from me. Right? That's the simplest solution. So you had a little bit of a thinking about what can be done and what should be the responsibility of these people in order to make um, self-reliance a greater reality. Please, over to you, Sudesh. Thank you, Raghavji. <clears throat> you said that, definitely optimism is a key. And I'm really optimistic saying that in years to come, uh, the pace in which the adoption is happening was a bit, but now you see the pace has really picked up, okay? And uh, in Mahindra, since uh, our company is, is, uh, is into sustainability, most of our products are LEED gold certificate or a plan, platinum certificate. Okay, certified buildings. So we are very conscious about the supply chain. So we would definitely want to collaborate with the local vendors and suppliers. So it's again, I'll, it's the entire engineering fraternity which has to come up local architects which have been employed they have to they have to say that local materials have to be used those are some some thought process which has to go okay so instead of getting things imported so it drives from there so the we have been doing that okay so in a whatever our brief we give to the architects we say that we want to use the local source as much as possible native products okay in all our projects and having said that, the uh, when I talked about former, we have seen a huge change or shift in terms of adoption. Okay, we have seen all the robotics in place. We have seen uh, the welding technologies in place. Same goes uh, in the tiling industry also. What we believe now is in uh, selective collaboration. Okay, so that you now somewhere the sustainability and sustenance of the material is more and more superior initially than what it was. So we have a seamless and consistent supply in terms of quality of material. So we don't believe in, in changing the specs too often. So we thought, okay, over a period that would result in a better quality product. What in turn we expect from the vendors is definitely invest in technology, 
and uh, innovation okay and uh, and be upbeat with what is being done in the west so that now uh, product quality can be up see they are the domain experts so so whatever tolerance levels endurance levels which is required now it has to reach the indian customers and i am sure uh, i believe that uh, during the pandemic most of the builders were running around with the local builders ki how to adopt okay how to stay away from imports so this is a time to leverage but again there is a huge deficit in terms of what our exports and imports are there so it can't happen overnight it would take some time but definitely the gap can be bridged over a period say five years ten years down the line no i'm sure ki majority of the projects will be our indian products local products and as we are heading away towards the atmanirbhar i think we are in the right direction Uh, it it just needs that right collaboration and investment in technology which i'm sure i want to i want to follow this up with one quick question for a very very brief comment and after that i would like to move to nimish then um, there are some questions which are coming from uh, some of the blue circle members on the on the attending so i would like to take up some of those questions and before we wrap up the day i would uh, actually come back to each of you for a 30 seconds uh, wrap up uh, comment Uh, that is that's how the rest of the uh, 25 minutes is going to go now a quick question for you sudarshan as a follow through in the set of responsibilities that the vendors need to take take up is there scope for throwing in sustainability sustainability is an important element and like i mentioned in the very beginning it is estimated that 40% of the greenhouse gases are produced by the real estate industry in the country so what can you say about it let me touch upon one very important <coughs> cement production which is having the largest co2 emissions okay and we have seen the replacement of ggbs or fines into the cement where no current scenario indian market we are still struggling to reach around 30 or 40% replacement where you look at the western world they have reached around 70% to 80% of replacement of cement by ggbs so one area where we can really develop okay so it gives you a long it's been a known fact that the concrete is much more durable okay okay with with higher ggbs so this seeding in problems in terms of settling time and uh, consistency of the concrete these are some areas which we have to work and we have pioneers in this industry in concrete experts in this industry in this country so that is where we have to come in terms with so if you are able to crack somewhere like 70% or 80% of replacement of ggbs into the cement This is a huge, huge CO2 emissions being cut off. But so Dushan, is there no wonders uh, in sustainability? In, in your opinion, um, is there so much volume of blast furnace slag that is available in the country? It is. It is only, only to do with is the quality of GGBS which is available in this country. And I am sure with the demand rising up, there would be a lot more suppliers who will be able to or willing to contribute. Uh, the quality of ggbs which is required for the cement industry thank you sudarshan um, i want to move to nimish nimish um, um, from a mindset and other four more ms that you mentioned if you look at innovation in the country i think innovation is an important uh, component of how we can become more self reliant so what can we do about more innovation which can lead to greater self sustenance i think the first one for most one is basically investing in uh, core engineering skills uh, to be honest with you raghavan and uh, this is something which is actually creating a bigger gaping hole not in uh, not just in the basically implementing the newer technology but at the same time not being able to think through radical solutions or for that matter uh, try and have a mindset which is towards research and uh, innovation uh in terms of how you can try and innovate there are three pillars which i believe should be there one is product transformation uh when uh, sudarshan briefly touched about it is basically mmc led construction so modern methods of construction uh designed for manufacture and assembly which basically goes into the third pillar which i talk about digital transformation where you have cyber physical systems working with digital technologies now uh and the last one is delivery transformation wherein you look at integrated project delivery uh a life cycle uh, costing life cycle the whole of asset uh, life uh, lean delivery mechanism lean construction mechanism 
enterprise model, so on and so forth. So, so there are basically layers of how transformation, so you can start with, let's say, if I talk about simple uh, 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 product transformation, if you're looking at offsite construction, you can start with stick belt construction, then go into modular construction, then go into offsite, and then go into additive manufacturing, or for that matter, robotic assembly. That's how you go up the value chain. Now, if I try and talk about one or one or two important things over here, when you when uh, when there was a mention and uh, Sudarshan mentioned about concrete technologies, let me tell you the appalling state of construction industry over here, uh, 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 Sudarshan. The pain remains that the number of quality civil engineers which are joining the courses in engineering colleges is appalling. It continues to fall down. You are no longer seeing that kind of a skill which was possibly there in our ages. And uh, I mean, that my, my main and your main talks about it, that there is something which we have lost in the process. But the fact remains, you can't get civil engineers to stand on site right now. They can't face the heat and dust. They just want to sit because we have moved from primary into tertiary. Tertiary sector basically offers them shade, offers them air conditioned environment, offers them bow and tie, which construction industry cannot. Now, these are basic challenges, and it actually goes to Maslow's basic hierarchical needs, Raghavan. When you're looking at the physiological needs not being met by a civil <coughs> engineer, which is why they say, why remain in civil engineering? Why remain in core engineering? I mean, today I'm talking about even mechanical or electrical engineer, not sticking to that and saying, right, let me do some coding. Let me get into software engineering because that's where the future lies. That's where the salaries are. That's where the compensation is. That's where the life is. And you look at uh, current student life uh, and you speak to them, Raghavan, they say, oh, sir, if I get into this job, what about my work-life balance? And I say, guys, sorry, you are into real estate and construction industry. And Devan would be smiling right now as I say it. You are supposed to work 18 hours a day, six days a week. And Sunday, by the way, you are supposed to spend half a, half a day on site. But Nimesh, this is no prescription for inviting more youngsters into the job. Okay? <laughs> so you have to change your narrative. But anyway, but those are very good points. What you're saying is essentially we have to build a basic um, talent pool, a, a spring board of people who are very interested in fundamental research and innovation and trying to do things differently. So I really appreciate that point. I'll just add one, one yeah. layer of optimism over there. Sure, sure. The point I made about this heat and dust and students not getting into it. Once you start absorbing these people into, so let's say construction industry's most highly paid job in developed market, a truck driver, a reinforcement fitter, can you believe a reinforcement fitter in the US, you know how much does he earn in his life uh, throughout, uh, so in a, in a year, it is no less than $185,000 a year. That's a reinforcement fitter. Can you think of that kind of a compensation here? No, but then their productivities are even higher. The productivities are even higher, and that's that's true with various other construction professions also. So once you start improving the overall situation, once you start creating a, a layer of attraction around this profession, Raghavan, it will it will. So there that's is sure. more ownership. Uh, you are absolutely right. I think one has to look at the overall systemic approach to make this industry in, this, in the very same country. We've got an IT sector which employs a few million people, and they are okay. So it's a question of how we create value. Um, uh, across the sector, that becomes an interesting thing. So, but your, your views are fundamentally uh, brilliant. I think uh, you are pointing out the place where we should start, which is the talent and invitation to youngsters to come with an open mind and willingness to do innovation. So appreciate that point. We had a, interestingly, I, I would encourage you to look up this uh, webinar. A few weeks ago, we had one on innovation in the real estate sector. There were many very, very interesting points. Absolutely revolutionary interesting points. There was Mr. Rao who spoke about saying, can a building do the job of a tree? I said, huh, what is this point about? And he went on to explain what he meant by it. You should really look at that link and uh, you know, listen, to, uh, listen to him talking about logically how a building can do the job of a tree. There was somebody else who's actually put the money where his mouth is and start, set up a fly ash based bricks factory. And he's also gone into construction which is a little bit more than just pre precast and is doing some 1500 2000 homes in some place in madhya pradesh and then um, green buildings it's a huge area huge uh, focus point for us to get um, 
get on the trajectory of innovation and get to points of environment sustainability in a very, very big way. So gentlemen, these are interesting answers. We always run short of time. What I'm going to do is in the interest of uh, respecting the people who have asked the questions, I'm going to go to question answers. And when there are still about three, four minutes left, I will come back to each one of you and you would uh, request you to kind of give your concluding remarks. During the question answer session, we'll read out the question and I may direct the questions to one or the other of you, or if anybody wants to put up the hand and give an additional comment, you'll be most welcome. Um, so there is uh, Captain KK Sharma who has put up his hand, wants to answer a ask a question. Um, I'm going to read out the question that is given and uh, maybe Siddharth can uh, open up um, his screen to ask the question, but let me read out the question for uh, all of you. Uh, maybe, maybe best is he asks, is, uh, could you have uh, Captain Sharma speak? Uh, I, that? Yes, yes, yes. Go, ahead. go ahead. Depending on the question, we will ask one of the panelists to venture to answer. Captain Sharma is a very senior industry leader and he's a member of the Blue Circle uh, leadership uh, is a member of the Blue Circle community. Yeah, hi, Mr. Agwan. Uh, hi. Good evening hi. to the panel. Yeah. Thank Actually, you. Actually, uh, I've uh, put down the my uh, my views in the chat, in the question answer thing. You may read it out from there. There's okay. No let let me read it out. Views. Yeah. Okay, I'll read it out. Uh, amid the rising disputes, time for stop of imports from China, whether forced or voluntary, is not very far. We therefore need to speed up the shift to Indian material rather quickly. Industry will need to help vendors to produce quality stuff. If pharma, chemicals, etc., can do it, construction materials can do it too. The import, in fact, gives the liberty to rebrand with our own brand name in addition to the other benefits. I think, uh, let me just add, make one statement, but I will move it to um, maybe Sudarshan and uh, Devan for picking the question for answering. I think what we have heard this evening is that there are existing issues that need to be sorted out in order for us to accelerate in this journey. Uh, forcefully stopping will have its own repercussions. What I think uh, uh, Sebi referred to it in our earlier conversation as uh, supply shock. So. Looks like we've lost Raghavan. He so invited Devan to, yeah, go ahead. Captain Sharma, you wanted to say something? No, uh, Raghavan, I think we lost you in between and that was the reason I jumped Oh, in. I see. Uh, did you all hear the question though? Yeah. It, okay, it was after so, the shock only. Oh, okay, it got shot. So I think you all heard the question. Uh, I'm assuming that Captain Sharma is able to listen to us. May, may I invite Deben to give his uh, quick comments quickly and then followed by Sudarshan very quickly, then I'm going to go back to other questions. I uh, see the question is, uh, can we, uh, you know, like pharma and other industries create the, you know, uh, ecosystem to be self-reliant, right? Uh, yes, why not? And I think the basic problem, and I'm, I'm purely talking as an architect here, and uh, the the day we stop replicating waste in terms of design and you know creating, we talk about sustainability, we talk about you know green buildings, we talk about carbon emissions. The the problem starts when when we start designing the buildings the, the way they are designed for for the cold and colder countries, or waste. <clears throat> we definitely you know, are forced to import material which is not suitable for local conditions. Uh, having said that, uh, it's, uh, it's not uh, very difficult to create an ecosystem and create, uh, you know, uh, the, the supply chain for construction, definitely yes. Uh, and the more we use locally available material, the more you, we sort of do away with, you know, a material like, why should we use Italian marble if we have the finest quality of marble and granite available in India? So what I would say is the mindset, again, coming to Nimish's point, it's become uh, the topic of the webinar today. It's about the mindset and the approach. So I think at 
at the design stage, at the conceptualization stage. If you start working and thinking about the local material, yes, you can create that supply chain here in India. Thank you, thank you, Devan. Uh, can I have a quick comment from Sudarshan? Yeah. Raghavji, so what Captain told, probably a sudden obstruction might cause a huge disruption because there's a huge deficit. So I would say gradually it has to be brought down and I'm sure we'll be doing it. On the other side, we have to also consider is somewhere you now our Indian local vendors, even they have a they have a cost point. Okay, they're not able to match up with that. They, having talked about construction, now you know, commodity prices are 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 going all time high. So so the builders are pressed uh, on on the cost. So somewhere you no know, okay, the local builder local uh, vendors also have to. Uh, probably they they need some support from government. I don't know what it, it can be something like a, a GST discount or a, might be a tax benefit or something so that they they do that break even and and will 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 help the uh, larger fraternity and and like what how we told see the native materials are something you no know, which which our architects have to bear the flagship and it is also a responsibility of a builder to give a brief that. See, we don't fancy any Italian marble anymore. It's locally available stones, uh, which is, which are more perfect than what it is. So, so it's it's a it's a combined approach. Uh, approach toward toward some point of time, definitely we can build an ecosystem where we would definitely reach in stopping all the imports. That's what I feel. Thank you, thank you, uh, Captain Sharma. Thank you for asking the question. If I can add one more comment on this, um, when we do any changes to the cost basis of the supply chain, we have to remember that it will get transferred all the way to the customer. The starting point is the end customer pricing, and then we have to work backwards. So we have to look at it as a holistic uh, value chain uh, issue and not look at as only as some fanciful import of uh, components by some other developers. So having said this, your question is extremely central to what is being discussed today. And you heard views across uh, multiple angles to see what can be done. So thank you very much for taking the pains and attending this uh, webinar and also asking this question. Um, I'm gonna be taking up a couple of more questions and I really request the panelists to give extremely short answers. Uh, sorry to put you under the pressure, but uh, that's all the time we'll have. The first question is from uh, Mr. Vikrant uh, Vadnere how 3D machine technology will helpful in the future of Indian construction industry and its cost effectiveness. Uh, is there anything that you want to say about that, Deben? 3D machinery, will it help in the construction industry? Yeah, again, 3D machinery is something which right now is not a cost effective, uh, you know, uh, solution for us. Uh, so if it also, is... Uh, what you're saying is if it is commercialized to a point where it is affordable and it makes commercial sense, this can take off, but not at the current levels. So what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, it will. So you see, uh, eventually uh, the innovation and technology would take over. It takes time. Uh, but, uh, you know, when you compare, especially when the cost effectiveness is compared with, with the modern technology, uh, do we have market for that? Uh, I would say right now, no, it's, it looks very fancy when you talk about 3D printing uh, and robotics and all. Uh, we know that how cheap labor we have here in India and it is cost effective. So it's a trade-off between you know, technology and cost saving. But eventually, uh, once we develop that skill set, when you know, it's like when LED came into picture, it was a very expensive light fixture. Now you you know, LED is everywhere. So it's yeah. like adoption of technology over the period of time and the cost saving it would bring and efficiencies it would bring to the system. Thank you. Just to add to that, Raghavan, important yes. point, 3D printing can work only in low rise uh, structures, not in high rise structures, which is an important factor which needs to be considered while you adopt 3D printing. Great. And Thank to you. add a point here, Raghavanji, yeah, yeah. IIT Madras have been doing some, some research on that. Okay. Okay. To see predominantly by Perry and the guys in, in, in uh, Germany who have got certification for the building with 3D printing. And as Nimish told, 
it's still at a very uh, infantial stage probably only for low rise buildings but it's matter of time we will have to adopt this technology sooner or later okay thank you there is a question uh, from mr mukul gupta principal and founder amg consulting a lot of building components equipment and uh, fixtures are imported from china due to huge cost advantage how to break the chain i think the whole evening the conversation has been around it you heard uh, mr mukul gupta various views that are required i think there is uh, the sen- the central point uh, seems to be one where people need to invest in the local uh, vendors and develop a, the local ecosystem that meets the cost and the quality and consistency in order for that to really happen so what you also heard is that it is going to be a slow process it's not going to be an overnight process so i will leave that question there because bulk of the webinar has been around the point there's another question from mr vidya baska additional vice president hero caustic products his question is role of specifiers influencers and buyers in foreign imported goods so i think um, maybe uh, nimesh you want to take a 30 seconds or less that one i think we discussed that in fact sudarshan talked about it they went talked about it uh, that uh, specifying local material is something which is important for architects and the developers to try and work in tandem and it is important that this happens <coughs> at the same time it is extremely important for the supply chain also to make the architects and the developers be completely aware of their product features unfortunately that one problem is our marketing sales force which goes and meets up with these developers are not able to impress upon them on the quality of this material which they are trying to bring or sell to them and that's where i think this this is also equally important that the feature listing of such product should be brought out in open so that architects and developers adopt it straight away thank you uh, there is a question from mr zishan rahman co-founder sky roots stand of green buildings in india in next 5 years i request you uh, mr zishan to uh, take the link uh, from um, blue circle and look at the innovation uh, webinar which happened uh, last month and you will get much more than answer to just your question because the managing director of uh, green building certification uh, was one of the panelists mr gopal krishnan and he had fantastic far reaching views and perspectives on this i request you to just uh, go through that um there's a question from mr ravi n director of otis um who says what is the please share the growth of real estate post covid i would give you the email id of a gentleman called sebi joseph who is the managing director of otis you could ask him <laughs> uh, uh sebi you want to say anything about this or i think uh, it looks promising this year uh, construction real estate industry is expected to grow about uh, 13% and uh, i think the next four quarters it looks promising elevator industry definitely is going to grow uh, expected to grow at a cagr of 7 to 8% next over the next four years and drivers are residential and infrastructure i said in the opening thank you thank you sadi There's a question from Mr. Shreyas Gandhi, uh, owner of Veer Infotech. His question is how business can grow for builders when real estate buy, sell, or rent happens through online portals. I would only say that it is a mechanism through which selling and buying and renting is increasingly adopted through online portals. That is still what the builders are selling. So I can't see how they are con- conflicting. But right now. we will not have time to really have a debate i apologize maybe we'll try and answer this through subsequent conversations um there is a question from mr suresh tripathi pre cost technology is not being used even though it is cost effective same uh, gentleman has asked another question there also should be rationality in compensation to engineers so these are uh, two questions from uh, suresh uh, tripathi may i ask um, Uh, so that's going to take the question on uh, both of them please pre cast technology as well as rationality in compensation to engineers on pre cast definitely our adoption has been very very slow on the market due to various challenges uh, it's, it's again it's a huge topic okay somewhere our adoption has been in piece meals so we intend on buying the best of best equipment but when it comes to engineering what our might be the joints the grout the, the the lifting hooks so it had to be so that is how it has taken so today we 
talk about precast building being there but nobody talks about a leak proof precast building so that has been a challenge so and of course the cost also and logistics so but but i am saying uh, people who have, have tested precast call uh, with with lot of apprehension now has has translated into 20 to 30% of their practices from conventional they moved on to precast so it is just matter of time okay mindset as we told okay so if the mindset has changed and when you start adopting the uh, technology i'll say easily 5 years down the line most of the construction 20 to 30% would be with precast and and, and to uh, bridge the cost now we are also looking at hybrid construction prefab so with all this making grounds i'm sure the future is very bright for precast and thank you sudeshan i would like to answer just supplement one point on this i think we should not leak, uh, look at precast as a precast in its own little cubicle precast is a system overall systemic approach only can lead to greater adoption just as it has taken a long time for aluminum form work to be utilized greater and greater it's a systemic approach right from uh, design pre engineering to all the way to actually manufacturing off site complete logistics associated with bringing it on site talent that is going to be able to adopt and use that and post post construction realities so unless the whole industry looks at it in a systemic way stand alone precast is never going to take off in a larger way but it will happen gradually so gentlemen i need to stop our uh, question and answer as well right now uh, in the in with respect to you know due respect to all the participants as well as the panelists regarding the time i seek permission for extension of this by another 3 minutes what i would like to do in the 3 minutes is to do a very quick 25 seconds each wrap up i would like you to uh, give a commentary uh, starting from uh, deben moza just give a quick summary comments about the whole topic then i will go to uh, sudarshan then i will go to sebi and then i will go to nimish this is a test for you to say whatever you want to say in 25 seconds thank you <laughs> uh, uh, thanks raghun so i'll be i'll be very quick uh, and uh, you know the 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 topic should have been the mindset uh, uh, and we've been talking about it i think it's all about mindset we we are now talking about uh, developing a supply chain we are also talking about you know uh, being self reliant i i don't think this was even discussed a uh, couple of years back and which is a good sign and i am very positive and optimistic about now real estate industry the way it's growing uh, the way you know uh, india is being looked at in terms of growth so i think future is very bright and uh, we need to be very optimistic about our about our future that's it thank you thank you dev and thank you so much can i move sudarshan please yeah raghav ji so as devan said definitely we are really optimistic though we have discussed throughout the session back and forth on what our challenges are there it's a matter of time okay now we are, and 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 this uh, pandemic has been the right inflection point where now our local uh, uh, suppliers or vendors will get benefited and, and only thing what we have to capitalize we should leverage on this point so that we don't get back to the previous and slow and steady whatever trade deficit is there we will we will be able to match up so i'm very very optimistic and we builders and the entire fraternity are working towards it i'm sure we will be able to overcome and reduce more and more imports thank you very much thank you uh, can i move to sebi please uh, lagwan uh, we should make uh, make in india uh, an irreversible program and we should enhance the pace after the post covid situation we should not just forget and backtrack on it. and we should make it happen within a reasonable uh, time frame so that you know india is up the i think that's that's a very powerful uh, summary sebi thank you so much that's really a good um, good good summary of the whole um, uh, situation today so appreciate that uh, nimish raghavan after so many luminaries have speak it is actually very difficult to summarize it in 25 seconds but i'll try and do my best uh, uh, i'll just i'll just try and exhort uh, younger generation the supply chain uh, to bring up nationalism the right quota of nationalism in their minds to make sure that they start looking at various things there will be difficulties and i think people have talked about it 
it is a slow process it's not an overnight process uh, but a baby will have to be born through that pain of uh, nine year, nine months of gestation and that final uh, 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 pain of uh, partition as well that is something which needs to be born there and that's where i believe god will finally replace greed in real estate developers thank you thank you nimesh really appreciate those comments uh, gentlemen uh, this is all the time we have let me just um, conclude the webinar by saying a couple of things certainly mindset has been the overruling uh, overriding uh, point throughout the evening and uh, rightly so because it's a starting point for us uh, second is i think uh, there should be absolutely no doubt that the industry is always wanting to localize as much as possibly can at the same time there is a cap in terms of the customer pricing and what the industry is trying to do is to meet that customer price expectations through the best possible sourcing third is we also found that much as we wish it to happen overnight there are practical issues with respect to i would say cost quality consistency and supply at scale unless all these four factors are addressed thoroughly comprehensively and in a commercially viable manner it is not going to be an overnight shift i think we also agreed that several of the initiatives taken by the government are all in the right direction positive directions and as sebi said execution is the key i'm sure that we will get around to that and when this happens this process will hopefully snowball into a larger scale where hopefully from the large percentage of imports that are happening today maybe that can go down lower and lower it's also very clear that there is a big responsibility to develop this area it is just not replacing one with the other there's a lot of investment of engineering talent required to localize the product work with the vendors and work on the quality aspects work on the supply chain and logistics issues and everything around it in order to make this supply chain a reality and available to the real estate industry let me only tell you having been in the real estate industry myself the industry is not very excited about having to import and use it's very convenient for the industry to use locally available materials if they met the customer expectations which includes the cost price point so with that i think we've had um, very very interesting views from real practitioners drawn from different aspects of the industry and i cannot thank the uh, panelists enough for taking the time um, thank you sudarshan thank you nimish thank you deben and thank you sebi for taking a lot of your time in in turning up and actually preparing and giving your insights really really appreciate it i'm sure that the audience of blue circle who listen to you today and we're going to be listen to the recordings over several months from today will all be very appreciative of the views that you've given if all of them have taken away three four points that they think that they can actually act on i think this webinar would have been well worth it thank you once again thank you blue circle for the opportunity to moderate this webinar over to you siddharth thank you very much sir uh, such an insightful and engaging conversation in and a real privilege to hear you on and and very well moderated mr raghavan our our leaders and i have have been hooked till the end and we have taken up several nuggets from today's conversation i'm also receiving messages from our members as we speak and i really wish we had some more time uh, and also thank you to our leaders in the audience for joining in large numbers and for and for always staying till the end and for always sharing excellent questions uh, along with our weekly webinars and our publication we're taking these discussions and conversations on our exclusive community the app which is curated for senior leaders across six sectors which are real estate logistics healthcare energy e mobility and aerospace and defense so whether you would like to engage with us on our platform leaders are invited to join the real estate circle and also get access to the other allied circles which we are building i have also shared the app link in the chat box and we'll be emailing you all shortly so thank you very much once again sir we look forward to having more such discussion in the future and please stay safe Thank, Thank you. you so much. Bye bye. Bye bye.